Hey guys, if you like my videos, click on subscribe and give me a like. And don't forget the bell so you can get notified of new ones. Hey guys, how's it going? Dale here. Today I have a brand new Acer Swift 3 model. It's the Ryzen 7 4000 series CPU. And boy, this thing is fast. Um, these new 4000 series Ryzen 7s blow the doors off the Intel 10th generation i7 H series processor. So I just think they're really fast. Now this model comes with 8 gigabytes of DDR4. It's LPDDR4. It's on board. And unfortunately that's the most you can put in this model however the NVMe SSD is upgradable it's currently a 512 and I've been finding out if you go to like Acer's website or HP's website when you buy these laptops with 128 256 or 512 SSDs they tell you that they tell a lot of people that that's the max that you can go that it won't support like a one terabyte well in this video I'm gonna show you that it works. I'm going to prove them wrong. I got a brand new XPG SX8200 Pro NVMe SSD. It's a Gen 3. It's a um, it's from A Data. I've used these before. These are very fast drives. They're right up there with the Samsung 970 SSDs. I like them. They cost a little bit less money, but they do perform very well. So we're going to go ahead and go from 512 SSD up to a one terabyte. I'm going to do a quick clean install on Windows 10. 2004 edition and show you that it does work but again we're stuck with the 8 gigs of DDR4 memory uh, we can't upgrade that but this model has a full 1080p IPS display anti-glare of course it's got the fingerprint scanner for the Cortana and hello and all that fun stuff nice touchpad backlit keyboard it's very very thin as you can see it has a regular USB port on this side along with a headphone or audio jack and over here on this side, oops, we have uh, a high-speed 3.1 USB port, A style. Then we got the C-type USB 3.1 and an HDMI port, and now our power cord plugs in right there. Now this also model also has the new Wi-Fi AX, the Wi-Fi 6 in it, which is pretty cool. A very good battery life, about eight to ten hours. It's rated at. So without further ado, I'm going to open it up for you. Now I've already moved all the screws. They're right here and they're all the same length. So you don't need to worry about which screw goes on which hole. So I'm going to take my little, after you get the screws all out, I'm going to take my little plastic spudger tool. Please don't use metal tools on these. You're going to leave gouge marks. I'm going to start actually right along the front seam right here where it meets the palm rest on the top get my little tool in there and just gently slide along here work it up These come off quite easily just like that so here's the inside right here now this is our 8 gigabytes of LPDDR4 it's very low power consumption one reason to get such good battery life it is DDR4 Here's our NVMe SSD, the 2280, in the slot right here, and of course, lots of battery, that of which I'm going to disconnect real quick. A little piece of tape on here. Let's pull that up. Carefully disconnect it from the main board. It just pulls back carefully, just like that. Before we start messing around with our screwdriver, we don't want to drop a screw. But this is your Wi-Fi card right here. Of course, your cooling pan, your CPU, GPU right there, the AMD Radeon graphics. But I've been reading a lot of benchmarks on these 4000 series Ryzen 7s. They're really, they perform very, very well. And with a good fast SSD in it and the graphics and the CPU, I think you can do a lot of productivity, some, some video rendering and things like that, productivity stuff. So I'm going to remove that drive. Take our SX8200 Pro, put it right back into the slot here, just like that. Now you can put, oops, different types of drives in, whether it's Samsung or Kingston or A Data in this case. 
I just like the way these drives perform. It's a good bang for the buck, so to speak. And I'll have listed below what the exact model and stuff is. Now let's got our screw back in. We got the new SSD. I'm going to do a clean install of Windows 10, the 2004 edition that just recently came out. Reconnect my battery firmly. And my bench tops are all anti-static, in case you're wondering. They get treated every day. Never ever had a problem in over 20 years of doing this. So we got our battery reconnected. Put our pan back on. Carefully snap it back into place. Don't squeeze too too hard on the lid, however, because you got a screen under there. So be conscious of that when you're putting it back together and taking it apart. I'm going to put the screws in when I'm all done. I'm going to plug in my power cord. And I'm going to take my USB Windows 10 installation drive that you can create for free easily. Just download the Windows 10 media creation tool. I have a video on how to do that from start to finish. It's quite easy. Place it in my USB port. Power it on. And see if it'll just boot from it. It should. If not, we can hit F12 to bring up the boot menu. So there it is right there. Windows 10 set up 64 bit. Hit enter. This process should not take very long, guys. It's got the new um, Bluetooth 5 in it as well. Latest generation of Bluetooth. Not a big Bluetooth fan myself, but that's what it has. Install now. Sorry guys. Hit next. Go to custom. And right here you can see, here's our one terabyte SSD. Gonna hit next. A lot of these Acer's and HP's and, um, that I've worked on, these brand new ones, manufacturer, you go into their forums or their questions and answers section, some, somebody from the company will tell you, no, it only supports you know, 512 or whatever it happens to be in that model. They just want you to buy a more expensive laptop with the bigger SSD in it. It's the only thing I can think of. I've, you go to Amazon, look on the questions and answers, and people ask, hey, can I put a bigger SSD in it? Nope, 512 max, or same with memory. Nope, 12 gigs max, even though you can bump it up to 20 gigs if it has four gigs on board, etc. I just run into all that time, and I just never had a problem upgrading these newer models, or even the older models, for that matter. And if it don't work, it don't work. But on this new stuff, there's no reason you, sh you wouldn't be able to put you know the new bigger stuff in it. The new modern chipsets and motherboards, processors can more than can more than handle it. So I'm just doing this video mainly to demonstrate that you can easily put a larger NVMe SSD, a Gen 3 drive in here. There really isn't anything out there in the Gen 4 arena right now as far as laptops for the PC Express 4. It's just not really available. I think there's only like one, one or two chipsets they're even out for that. And those are like in gaming motherboards and in desktops. So I'm just going to, like I said, let this process go here for a minute and I'll be back in just a second. All right, guys, we're just about done installing Windows here. At this point, of course, you can remove your flash drive. You don't need it anymore. And I'm going to skip connecting to the internet at the moment. We don't need that. So we'll just click on I don't have internet down here. No big deal. Yeah, we'll just put in user. No password. I like to turn off all this stuff mainly just for privacy and whatnot. You can control all these settings later. Easily in settings. No, I don't care about Cortana right now. So yeah, this is going to be a very fast laptop. I mean, it was already, but now we got a little bit 
higher performance drive in there. This, these um, SK Hynix drives, I see these a lot in Acers. I always after a fresh cleaning saw, I like to go to the manufacturer's website, just make sure we got all the latest, the best drivers that we can get, graphics, um, maybe a touch pad, but typically the, the new Windows 10 puts in all the best drivers, usually, not always, but like chipset drivers and things like that, or any other support software they might have to download and install, maybe the Acer Care Center, if you want that. But this is this is a 14 inch model as you can see there's no numeric keypad on the side and we're just about in windows but really i want to do this video to show you that you can easily put a larger ssd in these despite what they tell you at acer and some other forum someplace i do them all the time never had a problem or this computer and right here's our right here's our one terabyte ssd so I hope this video was helpful, guys. Make sure you check out some of my other videos, and please subscribe. I'd appreciate it. Thanks for watching. I hope you all have a great day.